Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and to another Premier Thursday. So today I thought we'd just do some silly daft short stories. There'll be quite a few of them. Enjoy! The story of four friends and four sons. Four friends who hadn't seen each other in thirty years reunited at a party. After several drinks, one of the men had to use the restroom. Those who remained talked about their kids. The first guy said, My son is my pride and joy. He started working at a successful company at the bottom of the barrel. He studied economics and business administration, and soon began to climb the corporate ladder, and now he's the president of the company. He became so rich that he gave, gave his best friend a top-of-the-line Mercedes for his birthday. The second guy said, Darn, that's terrific. My son is also my pride and joy. He started working for a big airline, then went to flight school to become a pilot. Eventually he became a partner in the company where he owns the majority of its assets. He's so rich that he gave his best friend a brand new jet for his birthday. The third man said, well, that's terrific. My son studied in the best universities and became an engineer. Then he started his own construction company and is now a multi-millionaire. He also gave away something very nice and expensive to his best friend for his birthday, a 30,000 square foot mansion. The three friends congratulated each other just as the fourth returned from the restroom and asked, what are all the congratulations for? One of the three said, we were talking about the pride we feel for the successes of our sons. What about your son? The fourth man replied, My son is gay and makes a living dancing as a stripper at a nightclub. The three friends said, What a shame. What a disappointment. The fourth man replied, No, I'm not ashamed. He's my son and I love him. And he's not done too bad either. His birthday was two weeks ago and he received a beautiful 30,000 square foot mansion, a brand new jet and a top of the line Mercedes from his three boyfriends. The Letter to the Husband Dear Husband, I'm writing you this letter to tell you that I'm leaving you for good. I've been a good woman to you for seven years and I have nothing to show for it. These last two weeks have been hell. Your boss called me to tell me that you'd quit your job today and that was a last straw. Last week you came home and did not notice that I'd gotten my hair and nails done, cooked your favourite meal and even wore a brand new negligee. You came home and ate in two minutes and went straight to sleep after watching the game. You do not tell me you love me any more. You do not touch me or anything. Either you are cheating or you do not love me any more. Whatever the case is, I am going. P.S. If you are trying to find me, don't. Your brother and I are moving away to West Virginia together. Have a great life. Your ex-wife. The letter to the ex-wife. Dear ex-wife, Nothing has made my day more than receiving your letter. It's true that you and I have been married for seven years, although a good woman is a far cry from what you have been. I watch sports too much to try to drown out your constant nagging. Too bad that doesn't work. I did notice when you cut off all your hair last week. The first thing that came to mind was, you look like a man. My mother raised me not to say anything if you cannot say anything nice. When you cooked my favourite meal, you must have got me confused with my brother because I stopped eating pork seven years ago. I went to sleep on you when you had that new negligee because the price tag was still on it. I prayed that it was a coincidence that my brother had just borrowed fifty dollars from me that morning and your negligee was forty nine ninety nine. After all of this I still loved you and felt that we could work it out. So when I discovered that I had hit the lotto for ten million dollars, I quit my job and bought us two tickets to Jamaica. But when I got home you were gone. Everything happens for a reason, I guess. I hope you have the filling life you always wanted. My lawyer said with your letter that you wrote, you won't get a dime from me, so take care. PS I do not know if I ever told you this, but Carl, my brother, was born Carla. I hope that's not a problem. Signed, Rich as Hell and Free. The Story of Three Conditions The beautiful secretary of the president of a bank goes on a sightseeing tour with a very rich African king, who was a very important client. The client, out of the blue, asks her to marry him. Naturally, the secretary is quite taken aback. However, she remembers what her boss told her, do not reject the guy outright so she tries to think of a way to dissuade the king from wanting to marry her. So after a few minutes, the woman says to the man, I will only marry you under three conditions. First, I want my engagement ring to be a 75 carat diamond ring with a matching 200 carat diamond tiara. The king pauses for a while, then he nods and he says, No problem, I have, I have. Realising her first condition was too easy, the woman says to the man, I want you to build me a hundred room mansion in London as a vacation home. I want a chateau built in the middle of the best wine country in France. The African king pauses for a while, whips out his cellular phone and calls some brokers in New York and France. He looks at the woman, nods his head and says, OK, OK, I build, I build. Realising that she's only one last condition, the secretary knows that she'd better make this a good one. 
She takes her time to think, and finally she gets an idea. A sure-to-work condition. She squints her eyes, looks at the man and says rather coldly, Since I like sex, I want the man I marry to have fourteen inches. The man seems a bit disturbed. He cups his face with his hands and rests his elbows on the table, all the while muttering in African dialect. Finally, after what seemed like forever, the king shakes his head, looking really sad, and says to the woman, OK, OK, I cut, I cut. <laughs> On their way to get married, a young couple was involved in a fatal car accident. The couple find themselves sitting outside the pearly gates, waiting for St. Peter to process them into heaven. While waiting, they begin to wonder, could they possibly get married in heaven? When St. Peter shows up, they asked him. St. Peter says, I do not know. This is the first time anyone has asked. Let me go find out. And he leaves. The couple sat and waited for an answer, for a couple of months. While they waited, they discussed that if they were allowed to get married in heaven, should they get married? What was the eternal aspect of it all? What if it doesn't work, they wondered. Are we stuck together forever? After yet another month, St. Peter finally returns, looking somewhat bedraggled. Yes, he informs the couple, you can get married in heaven. Great, said the couple, but we were just wondering, what if things don't work out? Could we also get a divorce in heaven? St. Peter, red-faced with anger, slams his clipboard onto the ground. What's wrong? asked the frightened couple. Oh, come on, St. Peter shouts, it took me three months to find a priest up here. Do you have any idea how long it'll take me to find a lawyer? A bum, who obviously has seen more than his share of hard times, approaches a well-dressed gentleman on the street. Hey, buddy, can you spare two dollars? The well-dressed gentleman responds. You're not going to spend it on liquor, are you? No, sir, I don't drink, retorts the bum. You're not going to throw it away gambling, are you? asks the gentleman. No way, I don't gamble, answers the bum. You wouldn't waste the money at a golf course for green fees, would you? asks the man. Never, says the bum, I don't play golf. The man asks the bum if he would like to come home with him for a home-cooked meal. The bum accepts eagerly. While they're heading for the man's house, the bum's curiosity gets the better of him. Isn't your wife going to be angry when she sees a guy like me at your table? Probably, says the man, but it'll be worth it. I want her to see what happens to a guy who doesn't drink, gamble or play golf. <laughs> a man in his forties bought a new BMW and was out on the interstate for a nice evening drive. The top was down, the breeze was blowing through what was left of his hair, and he decided to open her up. As the needle jumped up to 80 miles per hour, he suddenly saw flashing red and blue lights behind him. There's no way they can catch a BMW, he thought to himself, and opened her up further. The needle hit 90, 100. Then the reality of the situation hit him. What the hell am I doing, he thought, and pulled over. The cop came up to him, took his licence without a word, and examined it in the car. It's been a long day, this is the end of my shift, and it's Friday the 13th. I don't feel like more paperwork. So if you can give me an excuse for your driving that I haven't heard before, you can go. The guy thinks for a second and says, Last week my wife ran off with a cop. I was afraid you were trying to give her back. <laughs> Have a nice weekend, said the officer. And the last one for this evening. A mother was working in the kitchen listening to her son playing with his new electric train in the living room. She heard the train stop and her son said, All of you bitches who want to get off, get the hell off now because this is the last stop. And all you sons of bitches who are returning and want to get on, get your asses on the train now, because we're going down the tracks. The mother went into the living room and told her son, We don't use that kind of language in this house. Now go to your room and stay there for two hours. When you come out, you may go back and play with your train, but only if you use nice language. Two hours later, the boy came out of the bedroom and resumed playing with his train. Soon the train stopped and the mother heard her son say, All passengers who are disembarking the train, please remember to take all of your belongings with you. We thank you for riding with us today and hope your trip was a pleasant one. We hope you'll ride with us again soon. She hears the little boy continue. For those of you just boarding, we ask you to store all of your luggage under your seat. Remember there is no smoking on the train. We hope you will have a pleasant and relaxing journey with us today. Then the child added, And for those of you who are pissed off about the two-hour delay, see the bitch in the kitchen. The End Don't forget to like and subscribe and press the wee bell notification and a huge big thank you to all my subscribers, patrons and members. See you next week. Bye bye.